Hi, I'm Ken. And when we were talking about motors last, we ended up by saying that you buy yourself a motor because it has a certain amount of power, and that's the, the important parameter. And we said that torque, if you recall, is something which is interesting, but it's something you can amplify after the fact. You can put a transmission onto a motor and make all the torque you want. But now, let's continue on with what I consider the most important part of motor analysis and what could hurt your head a bit, but once you understand it, you'll be in a unique condition to be able to design with the motors you have available to you. So let's talk about how motors are sold. Different manufacturers have different criteria for what they want to sell their motors for. You would like to buy a motor that say produces 500 watts and say it goes 10,000 RPM. And if you go to a manufacturer, let's say yes, this is a 500 RPM or 10,000 RPM motor and it produces 500 watts. But what they won't tell you and what you have to deduce is that that's probably not going to be at the same operating condition. So you get one or the other. So the cool thing about it is, is that when you buy a motor, you can test it yourself by measuring only four parameters. The first two are pretty easy to get. If you take a motor, you power it up with the voltage it's intended to do, and then you run it without any load on the end of it, you measure the speed. That's called free running RPM. The second parameter you want to measure while you're operating at full voltage and no load is how much current is going into the motor. That's called the, the free running current. Those two parameters are easy to get. The second set of parameters that you need to measure if you really want to know how a motor performs are the scary ones. You need to know what's the maximum torque this motor can produce. What's the mass, maximum twisting effort? And it shouldn't be too much of a surprise to you that that happens on a DC motor at zero RPM. So in other words, that's called stall performance, stall torque. On a, on a, a motor, you can measure that by uh, some sophisticated ways. A simple way is simply to put some sort of a clamp on the output shaft with a lever arm and a scale and measure that torque when it's applied with full voltage. It won't be fast to do that because motors don't like doing that very long. They get very, they get very hot very quickly. So you want to measure that torque and at the same time measure what the stall current is. But having those four parameters now, you can totally predict the overall performance of the motor. So for example, here's a motor that I tested not too long ago, a few years ago. This is a motor that's called a Van Door motor. It's actually quite a low RPM motor, so you can actually physically count the revolutions. And it, it's a low RPM motor because it has a built-in worm gear transmission. But if you were to measure this, this uh, motor under those four conditions, the free running, you'd find out that the free running speed is about 48 RPM. That's how fast that output shaft's turning. And when it's doing that, it is uh, absorbing about about one and a quarter amps coming into it. And it turns out that when this thing is stalled, when you have the maximum voltage to it and have no RPM, it actually puts out about 360 inch pounds of torque. Significant amount, by the way. And at, at that point, the current has risen to about 24 amps, 24.2 amps. So having that data, those four bits of data, I can then go to a spreadsheet and the spreadsheet will automatically generate all the data you see on the slide. Now this is really useful and you'll see that the areas highlighted on green are the only things I actually measure but everything else just produces uh, automatically because of the relationships of, the, uh, of how DC motors operate. You'll see that I can predict the amount of torque, the amount of current, the power, mechanical power coming out and then comparing that with the electrical power, remember electrical power is voltage times current, the voltage on here is always the same, 12 volts. And so I can also then predict the efficiency, how much of that electrical power is being converted to mechanical power. Now, even though this is very useful data, it's probably not as illustrative as, as taking these same data and putting them into a graph. So here's a typical performance map. Now notice on this map, there's gonna be a bunch of parameters displayed, but they're all referenced to the same parameter here, which is the output torque. Motors behave based upon how much load they have on them. So this is, this is the reason why everything you'll see on this slide is referenced to output torque. If we look at this, we're going to see speed, current, power, efficiency, and heating on here. Let's look at the first one. Now, it's pretty clear, I think, that if you were to take a motor and you clamp down that till you put as maximum torque on as you can, the speed's going to be zero. You've stopped it. That's called stall. On the other hand, if you start removing the torque, this thing starts going faster and faster. So this relationship on here is quite simple. The more torque you put on it, the slower the motor goes. And the cool thing about it is absolutely linear. Not unexpected. You have two points on a curve, one at, at uh, zero torque and maximum RPM, one at maximum torque and zero 
uh, in zero speed. It's a straight line. And this is the reason why when the manufacturer says, I've got a 10,000 RPM motor, the only time it'll ever reach 10,000 RPM, if that's the maximum, is when there is zero load on it. Not too useful for most robots. The second issue on this performance map, which is really intriguing and interesting to, uh, to think about, is how the current is related to the same parameter of torque. Now, if we think about it from a science, scientific or physics viewpoint, we would understand that the more current you put through a conductor, the stronger the magnetic field is around it. And of course, since the armature inside of a motor is a fixed radius from the spinning axis, then the more force we put on that fixed distance, the more torque we develop. And so this leads you to, to believe that the torque of a motor is dependent upon the current. And indeed, if you look at this curve, you will see that the more current that goes through a motor, the more torque it produces. And in fact, uh, when it gets to full maximum torque, it will also always take maximum current. Most motors don't like that, by the way. Now, on the other end of the extreme, when it's in free running range, when there's no load, it takes minimum current. And the question you might ask yourself is, well, if there's no torque coming out, why is there current still being absorbed by the motor? Well, the simple matter of fact is there is torque being generated by the motor, otherwise the motor wouldn't spin. But that torque is being absorbed by the bearing losses inside, by the windage inside the motor, these are all things which are not useful to you, but they do absorb electrical power. Now the next parameter we're going to look at is, what about the useful mechanical power that's coming out of a motor? That has to do with torque and RPM. And it's an interesting relationship. You, you might think that perhaps the maximum power occurs when it's at maximum torque. But we also discovered that maximum torque only occurs when it's stalled, which means no RPM. And a mechanical engineer will tell you right away that if you have no RPM, you can have as much torque as you want, but you won't get any mechanical power. So the power is exactly zero when it's at maximum torque, because it's zero RPM. What about the other end of the chart? What about when it's at maximum speed? That should be a lot of power, right? Except how much torque does it produce at maximum speed? Zero. So therefore, at either end of the torque parameter, there is zero mechanical power. Now you could find some curve that fits those two points, it could be a straight line, which means that's not a very useful curve, it means zero power throughout. But it turns out the relationship is actually an inverted parabola. And you'll also notice that any DC motor produces the same power at two different operating conditions. You can either go high speed and low torque, or low speed and high torque. Now there's a difference between the two. Because if you think about how much electricity it requires, how much electrical power it requires to develop that, there's going to be a difference. We're at the same voltage throughout, but notice as the higher the torque goes, the higher the current, which means the electrical power input goes up much higher. So it turns out that if you, if you take what you want, which is mechanical power, and divide that by what you are paying for, which is electrical power, that comes out with a thing called efficiency. If you want to operate a motor at its maximum efficiency for producing mechanical energy, you'll see the curve looks like this. Notice that it's, it's a curve which is shifted to the left from the parabola for the motor power, which means that maximum power is never at maximum efficiency, but rather maximum efficiency occurs at under maximum power. So these curves right now are all you need to use to design a motor to make it operate the way you want to. A very important caveat that I, I can't emphasize enough is that these motor performance maps and indeed the, the data which I displayed earlier are all based upon full rated voltage. Now they can be modified with partial voltage, but understand that, that all, the, all these parameters we're seeing shifting and following these curves are based only upon changing the load on the out of the motor, outside the motor. They're still at full voltage. Uh, just a few more things that you should get from that chart. Maximum power on any DC motor occurs at 50% of its free running speed. That's where it's going to happen. You can never get maximum power at maximum speed. And it's also at 50% of the stall torque. Now it's approximately 50% of the stall current, but again because of that free running current that, looks, that needs to be in there. The other really interesting parameter about uh, DC motors is the fact that because the power versus torque is a parabola, unless you're operating at the maximum power available, you'll have two different places where you can find the same power. These are all related, and as a designer, you should understand that one of them is going to be more efficient than the other. We need to go to the high efficiency, unless you just really want to heat up your environment. 
Now the highest efficiency will occur at about 25% of the maximum stall torque. And that's going to be at about 60% of the maximum power. So if you really want to operate a motor at its most efficiency, you want to operate it somewhere around two-thirds of the maximum power that can develop. Now this is a lot to take in one session. And in fact, it's worthwhile going over a couple more times because it could hurt your head a lot initially, right? But this is what is necessary to do the next step in motor analysis, which is how to design around these parameters and how to make your robot do what it's really supposed to do.